Welcome to part 5 of the Open Orbis PS4 Toolchain tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be taking the sample from tutorial number 3, and we're going to be um, building that, and we're going to be putting it into a package file. That way we can run it on the PS4. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overview of the SFO file format. Um, not the like down and dirty details of the actual binary level of the format, but basically um, how the SFO creator works and what you need to care about when you're creating it, how to create a package file, uh, which is going to be used to install the application on the PS4, and finally how to install that package file and run the application to test your application, and uh, or how to run other homebrew that you find from package files. Anybody who is doing modding back in the PS3 days may remember the notion of a package file. Package files were used to install games and applications on the PlayStation 3. Like that is the PS4, it does the same thing, it uses package files. Now internally these are different because obviously the PS3 and the PS4 internally are quite different, but the notion of using package files and putting it on a USB is the exact same as PS3. So we're going to be creating those package files to package our application so we can install it on the PS4. So to do that, we're going to be using Maxton's LibOrbis package um, toolset. I'll actually I'll bring it up on the... Uh, on the video here because it is a really awesome open source project um, and I, I want to kind of you know show where these tools came from so this is where those tools came from lib orbis package uh, I asked for his permission and we're allowed to include the binaries in our tool chain so we're gonna be doing that but of course we want to credit them because uh, you know this work is awesome and uh, this tool chain wouldn't really be working right now if it wasn't for his work so there we go so because of his tools, it's made very easy to create package files, but there are a few things we're going to need first. So like we were saying earlier, we're going to be using the PNG decoding sample we did in, uh, that we looked at in the third part, and we're going to be packaging that into an application just because it's the most obvious in demonstrating what's going on. Unlike the audio one, the audio one, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to capture audio properly. So that's why we're doing the graphics one. So if we pull up the PNG decoding sample, here is the root directory for it, right? So we have the solution, we have the readme, the make file. Most importantly, we have the eboot.bin. This is going to be your main file that we're going to be putting in the package file. This is what gets executed, and this is what the tool chain produces, okay? This is the most important file for actually packaging the application. Along with that, you have the logo, which we're going to need to... Uh, make sure the PS4 has in the sandbox or it's not going to be able to draw anything because it's not going to have the file. So these two are important. But there are also a few other files that we actually touched on in part one, but we didn't get too in-depth into. And we're going to do that right now. In part one, you may remember we brought up the data directory in bin. And we said we had all these files that are important for creating PS4 packages, but we didn't go too in-depth on them. So here, we're going to go in-depth on them. So up first, we have icon zero. Icon zero, this is going to be the icon that is displayed on the home screen, and it's on the dashboard for when you want to launch the application. So if you go on the PS4 and you install a game, let's say you have Battlefield, when you see the Battlefield game icon, that is what's showing is the icon zero. And then when you hit X on that, it launches the game. So this is something you can get creative with, you can get artistic with for your application. One thing uh, I will note here, you cannot use transparency in your icon zero. The package generator will reject it. You cannot use uh, the alpha channel. So make sure when you make it uh, that it's a 512 by 512 non-alpha PNG. Okay, so that's icon zero out of the way. Pretty straightforward. Param.sfo, people who did PS3 modding may be familiar with this file as well. This contains all of the metadata of your application. So that includes the title ID, uh, the app ID, the uh, title of the game, the version of the game, all that stuff. That's all contained in the SFO. And we're going to be editing that using Maxton's tool. Pick zero. Uh, this is basically just the background image that shows up when you, you know, scroll down into the different tabs that are available to games. You don't really need to care about this. This isn't necessary for packages. It's just something that you can provide if you want to. The GP4 template, so GP4 is the main project file format for creating PS4 packages. Um, so you can copy this and open it in Maxton's tool to be able to uh, create packages, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. 
Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get into the structure of a package file because there is a certain structure that you have to follow. So generally, when I'm managing package files um, related to my homebrew applications, I want to put the package files really close to my application source code just so that everything's grouped together and you're not scattering your files all over the place on the drive. So what I do is I go to the root where I have the solution and I just create a new folder and I call it package. In here, I'm going to replicate the directory structure that we're gonna be doing in the package. So up first, we have eboot.fin. So I'm going to copy that over and that is right in the root of the package file. Okay, that doesn't go in any folders or anything like that. It goes right in the root. Up next, we have the data folder. So if you remember in part three and part four, we talked about how the application was using the slash app zero path, which is the sandbox data path. So in our case, we're gonna take logo.png and we're gonna put it in this data folder. Okay, so those are the big ones from the actual sample. The next thing we wanna do is set up the metadata information. So the icon zero and the param.sfo all go in a folder called sce underscore sys. Okay, and in that folder, we're just going to drag the param.sfo and the icon zero into that folder. Now we're going to edit the param.sfo using Maxton's tool. So if we go to the toolchain root and we go to bin windows, you will find package editor right here from Maxton. This is this awesome little tool. I will say there is not a Linux version of this tool at the moment, mainly because .NET uh, doesn't really work nicely with Linux um, when it comes to WinForms. So you may need to run this in like Wine or something like that if you're on Linux, at least for the time being. So you can just drag the param.sfo file into the package editor and you can use the guided editor to edit the SFO file. So we're gonna want to set the SFO type to GD, game digital application. The content ID, we're going to set to this, IV0000-brew, and then these Xs, you're gonna replace with the content ID, the rest of the content ID, and then Y, you can just put any characters here that you want, really. Um, now, the reason we're keeping this content ID is uh, not at time of this video going up, but later on, we're gonna be doing a store and the store is gonna require content IDs to be consistent. And they're gonna need this brew prefix. And we're also going to be assigning um, IDs for these for these X's right here. Um, for people who wanna submit into the store, they're gonna obtain an ID and you're gonna to wanna to put that for your content ID. So that's not set up yet right now, but this is the format we're gonna be using, unless we change it last minute, but I think this is the format we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna use it here in this tutorial as well. One thing I like to do with these content IDs is because there's so many characters in there, it can be hard to keep track of, you know, if you delete characters, stuff like that. I just basically uh, bring it up in a text editor, which my text editor is actually bugged out right now. Let me just fix it. I bring it up in a text editor and I hit insert on my keyboard and I just insert over it. So I'll do 00001, for example. And then Y, we'll just do a test or we'll do uppercase test app and we'll just do PPP. Um, here you would put like your game name or whatever you wanna put here. You can get kind of creative with this part. It's this part right here that you, you are not really gonna be able to get creative with um, because of the store. We're gonna copy this content ID and put it in here. The title we're gonna call um, open, oh, open Orbis test app. We're gonna make the version 1.0 and the app version 1.0. The app type, we are going to make a paid standalone full application. The download data size, we don't care about. We're just gonna leave that at zero megabytes. The attributes, you're probably not gonna wanna mess with this very much. Most of these flags, we don't really care about. In fact, yeah, in this case, we don't care about any of these attributes. So we can just leave them alone. Now that we've set up the param.sfo, we can just go ahead and save it. I am going to do two zeros on these versions because I think that is the way most packages had it set up. So we'll save that SFO. And now we're going to create the actual package file. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into that data directory and I'm going to copy this template.gp4 into my package directory here. 
and I'm going to open that up in Maxton's tool. So we'll just open that up here. Perfect. So content ID, this is where we're gonna, we're gonna wanna make sure the content ID in the GP4 matches the content ID in the SFO. The passcode, you're, you're usually just gonna leave as zero um, because setting a passcode on these, on these uh, packages is not really gonna give you anything anyway. So you might as well just set it all to zeros. We're gonna leave it as a game package because we're not making DLC. And then you can see in the image um, directory here, we have a folder set up. This folder we set up over here, you can kind of see why I set it up the way I did. Now that I've set it up that way, I can just drag and drop the files into the image. So I'll go into the data directory, go into the data directory here, and I'll just copy it over. Go to the uh, module directory. Now the module directory, we're actually gonna leave blank because we don't um, have the modules because uh, those are copyrighted, so we're not redistributing those. So I'm actually, I'm gonna get rid of that folder because we do not need that. And then in SCE sys, we're going to keep the icon zero and param.sfo. We're gonna move that in there. And then finally, we have the eboot.bin, okay? Now that we have all of these, we can go ahead and save the uh, template file and we can build the package. So this is gonna open up a file explorer for you to save wherever you want the package to go. I'm just gonna choose the same directory that I have the template file in, and we're just gonna save it like that. So if everything goes well, you will see at the bottom here, save to package file. If there's anything wrong in your package, if your SFO file is wrong, if your content ID is incorrect, if you have any errors like that, it should say it here in this log window. So now we have the package file. What we're gonna do with this package file is we're gonna put it on the root of a USB drive and we're gonna plug that USB drive into the PS4. Now, I'm not, I haven't really tested it um, in terms of, I'm not sure if it matters which USB port you plug it into. I remember on the PlayStation 3, you had to plug it into the port clear, um, closest to the CD drive. I do that on the PS4 just to be safe. Uh, I don't know if you have to do that, but if you can, just plug it into the one closest to the uh, CD drive because that is going to be USB zero. So we're gonna take this package file. Um, I'm going to put it on a, a USB drive really quick that I can find and I'm gonna plug it in the PS4 and we're gonna jump over to the PS4 side to show you what it looks like installing a package and running the Homebrew app. So we've now jumped onto the PS4. So we're just gonna go into the debug settings and go into the package installer and we're gonna install the package that we just put on the USB. And when we do that, it's gonna add it to the home screen. And there's our little icon zero that I was showing off earlier. And when you launch the app, you're gonna see that that PNG is rendering to the screen. And that shows that the app is working and that's all there is to it. So that concludes part five of the series. Now, part six, seven, and eight are gonna be going into the debugger and some of the other tools that are included with the tool chain as well as Miralib. Now, um, because of some weird changes we're going to have to do with the project types. We're going to have to switch them over to .NET Core. These videos are going to be a bit delayed. I originally planned to drop all these, uh, all eight videos at the same time, but because of those changes that I'm going to have to make with .NET Core and stuff like that, um, those other three videos are going to be delayed by probably about a few days. So if you're seeing this video, this is the last video for uh, dropping with the release of the tool chain. And then, uh, for the last three videos, we'll see you in the next three days and that'll take you through some of the debugging and the API and stuff like that. So yeah, I will see you in part six in a few days.